All right, so let's do an example that involves some distance, rates, and times. Now, I didn't give an example of our typical train problem that everybody likes to groan at, but we might see some of those. Now, the thing with those problems is it sounds like a lot of information being thrown at you. And the key to these types of problems is really to dissect that information and figure out what it is you're looking for and figure out how things are related to each other. So the understanding and organizing the information is the most important thing to start off with. And so what we need to make sure we do is draw a picture so we understand what things look like and then make sure we very carefully define each of the quantities involved in the problem. Not just defining our variables, but oftentimes there's gonna be quantities that are given to us that are either a number that's straight up given to us or it's somehow related to another quantity in the problem. So let's read this one. We've got these two cyclists that start at the same point and travel in opposite directions. One travels four miles per hour faster than the other. In four hours, they're 112 miles apart. Find how fast each is traveling. So before I start trying to define any variables at all, I want to draw a very rough sketch of what's going on. They're starting at the same point. They travel in opposite directions. And after four hours, they're 112 miles apart. Now, some important things to get out of this is we can first of all get a rough idea of how far each went. Now, we know that it's not exactly half because one's going faster than the other. So neither one of these are exactly 56. This is at 56 miles and 56 miles. But that gives us a rough idea if we sort of say, all right, if they were going at the same speed, it would have been 56 miles and 56 miles. So as far as a rough estimate or a kind of a common sense approach, the one that was going faster is going to be more than 56 miles. And the other one is going to be less than 56 miles. Those should be our final answers. I'm doing this in blue so we know this isn't like an exact science that here. But this kind of gives us a rough idea of what's going on. Now the other thing that we can do is we can apply similar reasoning to what we did in example two. We know the total here is 112 miles. So if I knew the distance of the person on the right here is D, then I actually know the distance of the other one is going to be 112 minus D. It's the same idea that if I know the total between two things, I don't need two separate variables. I can just say, hey, if one of them is 70, the other is 112 minus the 70 that he is. So this is starting to get us an idea of what's going on. Now to start defining our quantities involved in this problem, we're gonna create what we call a dirt box. Because we know that the underlying formula here is distance equals rate times time. So DRT with an equal sign in there is dirt, D-E-R-T. Math people can't spell. So we've got this dirt box that we're gonna create. Now our rows, are gonna represent each of the cyclists. We're gonna have the fast dude and the slow dude. And we're gonna fill in as much information as we can. We might not have every piece of information here, and that's fine too. So in this case, we know the fast guy, according to our picture up there, his distance is D. The slow guy, according to our picture, is 112 minus D. Now, the rate that they're traveling at, don't know. Don't know the fast guy, don't know the slow guy, do know how they're related. The fast one is going four miles per hour faster than the other. So I need to call one of these guys X. Doesn't matter which one. You can call it R if you want. Now the fast guy, don't write this down. One of the common errors that I see here is I see people say, oh, he's four miles per hour faster, that's four X. But remember what that operation is between the four and the X? Now that's multiplication. That would be four times it. That's quadruple. That's not the same thing. If we're four miles per hour faster, that's an additive function. That's X plus four. Now I do wanna point out that this is not the only way that to set this problem up. Somebody else might look at this problem and say, let's let the fast guy be X. 
If he's four miles per hour faster than the slow guy, the slow guy's four miles per hour slower. So I could call this x minus four, okay? Doesn't matter which way you set this up. As long as you jot down at the very beginning where we're at right now, we need to make sure that we jot down how we're defining our variables. That way, whenever I solve x equals, I can come back and actually answer the question. Now, as far as time is concerned, they both went for four hours. There was no head start or anything, so their time is four. All right, so now we have two equations, two unknowns. Now we can solve it that way by actually having two equations, two unknowns. I wanna talk about an alternate approach we could take to this. So we could look at this and say, d equals four times x plus four as one equation, and 112 minus d equals four times x as my second equation, and I could solve this system. That's one approach that we can take to this problem. Another approach that we could take is we could say, if I take the distance of the fast person and add the distance of the slow person, if I add those together, I get 112. The distance of the fast person is gonna be their rate times their time. The distance of the slow person is gonna be their rate times their time. And the cool thing about this approach is that this only has one variable in it. So I could go ahead and distribute, then combine like terms, and I may as well subtract the 16 to the other side, and then divide by eight. Now we could go ahead and do that over here as well. And what we can see is that we're gonna end up doing something very similar, which is a little bit more moving around. If I distribute the four, I could then use substitution to plug it in over here. 112 minus four X plus 16. Oops, hold on. Four X plus 16 equals four X. I could distribute the negative. I could combine like terms and add the 4x to the other side. I'm gonna end up getting the same answer with a system of equations. I just wanna point out there's two different ways you could kind of look at this problem and come up with the same answer. Now, please note that we haven't answered the actual question yet. We've only solved the algebraic part. Let's come back and read what we were actually asked we are asked to find how fast each is traveling. So that's our rate. X, no, is the speed of the slow person. So when we got X equals 12, 12 miles per hour for the slower cyclist, whereas the faster cyclist, their rate was x plus four. So that's 16 if we add four to our x value. So for the faster person, they were going 16 miles per hour. Now don't forget to look at this and say, does my answer make sense? So in this problem, what I'd be looking at to see if it makes sense as far as their speed is to say, are these reasonable bicycling speeds? And so it's a good idea to have some general ideas of what speeds make sense in your head. So knowing that, for instance, somebody jogging jogs at about five miles an hour, knowing that you drive through a neighborhood at about 25 miles per hour. So keeping in mind things like that allows you to compare this and say, these people are cycling somewhere in between a jog and a, a drive in a neighborhood. Another way you can make some sense out of this is to come back to our picture and say, they traveled a total of, well, I'll let that one run. We can look at the roughly half of this and say in four hours, if they went 56 miles, which they didn't, in four hours, then that would be about 14 miles per hour. And we know that one of them went faster and one went slower. So if we look back to this and say, oh, 
one did go two miles per hour faster and one went two miles per hour slower than that average there, that's a pretty good estimation or guess. So the answer does definitely make sense. Now the other thing I want to touch on that I did, uh, I talked about, but just to reiterate, make sure to reread the question because notice in this problem we had a variable for distance. We never solved for it. We weren't asked about it. And that's okay. Now if you want to solve for it, you could. You very well could figure out what the distances were that we could say, all right, well, coming back over here at 16 miles per hour for four hours, the faster guy went 64 miles. Well, that fits into my a little more than 56 miles idea from the beginning. So it, even though we weren't asked for it, you could solve for it. But again, make sure you reread the question and solve what you're actually being asked for.